together. Hello! Hello. Welcome to We Stand Together presents an hour dedicated to sisters, the NBC primetime show from 1991. What a, what a, what an iconic moment in television history that we are celebrating tonight. Uh, we are the pop culture professors. I'm Lauren Brickman. I'm Caitlin Bitsagai. And if you didn't already know it, We Stand Together is a weekly pop culture academic symposium that you can find on the More Banana Podcast Network. But we're also obviously a live show as well. And I like to think a lifestyle. Exactly. I know that I live that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we thought we want to do an hour dedicated to Sisters, the NBC primetime drama from 1991, we're like, that's what that one. Everyone um, loves Sisters. Mm -hmm. But here's what actually happened. We found out there are less resources dedicated to Sisters than we thought. And this turned into... Um, and it, this turned an adventure, I think, into a responsibility. It's true. I think, you know, like so many of us, this past year has really made us think about what matters the most and where do we find joy and what gives us comfort. And we've spent a lot of time over the past year talking about sisters. But unfortunately, what we have not been able to do a lot of is watch sisters because it has become abundantly clear to us that they and I mean the collective they of the world, are trying to erase sisters from our collective conscious because no, it is not available to stream and finding content is becoming more and more challenging. It's true. And so this next hour will serve as an oral history until justice is served and we can get sisters on Netflix or another streaming platform. That's right, Paramount Plus, I'm looking at you. Especially you. Um, we want to talk about what this show is not really yeah. quick. We tuned in. So there are a lot of shows with similar names, but this show is not about brothers and sisters. No. It's not about sister, sister. Mm -hmm. Though we love sister, sister. Mm -hmm. This show is not about sisters, the Australian show. Mm -hmm. It is not about sisters, the Tyler Perry show. Mm -hmm. This is not about the Amy and Tina movie sisters. This is about sisters a show from 1991 to 1996 on NBC. And this, these, these are the beautiful women that are the sisters. Yes, uh, maybe this po picture of them in the steam room rings a bell, uh, or you know, this stunning photo of them all staring off into the distance, which personally speaks to me very deeply. Um, I also would love to draw everyone's attention to the photo in the center of your screen. Uh, this image we found on Getty Images, and it is currently selling for nearly $500. And this is emblematic of the problem. Sisters content is becoming exclusive, right? And so we're hoping that tonight we can we can we can bring it to the masses much like Coyolan Smith who successfully petitioned 13 years ago to get Sisters on DVD. Now, this was incredible. And shout out to the Shout Factory, who helped Kolya uh, bring those DVDs into fruition and made them available. There's, you can purchase them on Amazon, but if you're like me, you haven't had a DVD player since probably 2017. Uh, so if you want to help Kolya, Lynn Smith, and all of the superstands out there get this show onto Netflix, you can join the Sisters TV Show fan group on Facebook. And you know what? We stand a true stand. We do. That's that's the Facebook group Look right at there. Look at this work this woman is doing. You can get on the Facebook group. She has already had success bringing Sisters to DVD. Now she wants the next step. Yeah. And we stand you in the work that you're doing. Like, there's nothing Caitlin and I more, love more than people that are willing to put in the work for the pop culture they love. Speaking of which... We do need to let you all know that we are on a tight timetable tonight. Yes. If you can tune into our shows before, you know, they can be marathons, two hours, two and a half hours. Not tonight, folks, because we remain dedicated to primetime TV. And this show will be finished by 9 p.m. so that we can watch the spring premiere of Grey's Anatomy. That's right. Uh, there oh are currently... <laughs> Oh my oh God. God. There's only 53 minutes and 48 seconds till season 17, episode seven. So that is how long we have left to celebrate this iconic show. So I think because of this tight timeline we're on tonight, I think it's time to bring on our first guests. Absolutely. And you know, this show, 
Millennials remember it. Mm -hmm. Gen X loves sisters. Boomers love sisters. I watched with a member of the greatest generation, my grandmother. Yeah. But how, did Gen, how does Gen Z feel about sisters? We just don't know. So we have two incredible Gen Z correspondents that we're going to be checking in with throughout the evening. Please welcome Sarita and Kim. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Oh my God. You guys are great. Wow. And you're live from a, a, a shared apartment or dorm. Dorm. Yes. Nice. So this is True Blue Gen Z folks. Now, what do you know about the show Sisters? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. There's a bunch of sisters, maybe related by blood. Maybe not. They, okay. I love that no one is making any assumptions. So we want to start by showing you the theme song just to get your impressions. Sounds great. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I'm excited too. Wow. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we're hearing sound. Okay. We're going to be back. You got, a, you got a moment. You got a moment. Think about it. You got some extra time. Mm -hmm. Process what you've seen so far. Um, also, if you're unfamiliar, the reason that it was a little grainy is because it was on a VHS tape. Right. So someone took a VHS and they made it into a YouTube, which we really thank them. Yes. So here we go. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so that was the opening credits of the TV show Sisters. Based on what you just saw, what are your initial impressions? Um, very, uh, horror movie vibes. I was kidding. It's a little scary. I don't, I want to know how this connects to the picture of them in the sauna. I was expecting like golden girls. Thank yeah. you for being a friend. And I got silence of the lamps. Some cute friends <laughs> clapping maybe, yeah. but yeah. this was, this was very, um, eerie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. An eerie horror movie is the vibe we're getting so far. Um, <laughs> was Rachel. Yeah. Rachel yeah. Was interesting. Interesting. Well, um, Gen Z is terrified. So let's give them a little bit more context. We're going to show you some ads that NBC ran for upcoming episodes. These these include some scenes, but they, they uh, are really old school primetime ads. This is from circa 1992 to 1993. Lesson in politics. There's no way in hell you're going to win this election. When her opponent drags her family through the mud. It's all lies and distortion. All new sisters, NBC Saturday. Conception failed. Adoption failed. The doctor suggested that I ask one of my sisters to carry the baby. The surprising season finale of Sisters. <laughs> it was a surprising season finale. <laughs> they couldn't have a baby. So her sister had one for them. Now the miracle child that brought this family together is about to tear it apart. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let you. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Selfish of me to let my baby with me. I gave him life. The emotional season finale, Sisters, NBC Saturday. Oh, it was emotional. It was so. The only ones who were there for you from cradle to grave are your sisters. In coming weeks, Hollywood will tell their story. This Patrick stuff. But it's all lies. Then. Am I going to die? One sister faces every woman's greatest fear. <laughs> and one week from tonight. What are you doing here? A fired worker goes over the yes. edge. A swell killer right now. And forces mm -hmm. a deadly showdown. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's going on? New stories that you can't miss. Sisters. You can't miss it. You can't. No, <laughs> but we missed it. <laughs> <laughs> you missed it by not being born yet. Yeah. But, you know, any thoughts? Anything change your mind in those ads? So we saw the classic everybody hugging in a waiting room. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, there's so much. Yes, <laughs> yes literally. <laughs> what about you? Um, there's a lot of babies. Yeah. I, I don't know what scandal is going on with these. If it's one singular baby, they're pat like that. There's just or they're all. I don't know what's going on with the babies. Right, as as Victoria pointed out, a lot of surrogacy plots going on in the '90s. That was a real fascination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So based on what you've, you've witnessed thus far, if you were to try to sum up the show Sisters in one sentence, 
how would you describe the show sisters in one sentence based solely on what you've discovered thus far? You want to go first? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're all connected by some mysterious baby and it's creepy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Interesting. They're all connected by a mysterious baby and it's creepy. Okay. Uh, Kim? Um, I, I would say ladies with um, feathered bangs and headbands all passing around a baby. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. You know, um, out of context, if you would, I could see how this show could have been called Ladies with Babies or Ladies with Babies. <laughs> Um, that does that does seem uh, to to resonate. Now, <laughs> simply on what you saw so far, do you want to see more? Does it get you excited? Is what you're seeing getting you interested? Is it pulling you in? Yeah, I feel like I. It's not even that I want to. It's that I need to. Like I don't right. think I'm able to sleep at right. night knowing that I watched all of this without being able to watch an episode and know it was. Fun. For me, it wow. was the bold words on the screen. Yeah. Where suddenly, that's what pulled me in, and I was like. Now, now I need to know more. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Now, um, have you have you had the experience of having to wait weeks between episodes of TV, or is that that's still something that you experience? Yeah, with uh, you... when I was in high school, more like when I was in high school, I like Riverdale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a little bit with Glee. It, I wouldn't say weeks, not weeks. I think it's more like a week is the standard. Like that Quinn Fabray car crash cliffhanger. Okay. Okay. Well, I think, you know, if you liked the drama of Glee, I feel like there's going to be a lot in Sisters for you. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think we just got to let you go and, and you'll have to like spend some time processing this. Yeah. We're going to give, we're going to give Gen Z some time to process what they've seen so far. And we're going to check yeah. back. Hold each, hold each other tight. Hold each other tightly. Yeah, hold each other tight. Um, wow. wow. It's, it feels like we're doing the Lord's work by bringing sisters to the next generation. I'm excited to see how they feel about the show by the end of the night. It is. It is. And and for, for us millennials, Legina, I just emailed you. So check that email and join us right here. So we want to talk to some people, though, that know the source material that mm -hmm that lived through the 90s, yes. um, the bold words were a part of our life and they didn't yeah. scare us. No. Maybe they should have. Yeah. But I, you know, when I see that trailer, I think comfort. I feel comfort, not creepy. Uh, and I know someone else who feels comforted by those images. Uh, please welcome to the studio, Tessa Claire Hirsch. Hi. Hi. Finally. Finally, Hi. this feels <laughs> so right. This feels so right to be sharing this time and space with you and celebrating this piece of art with you. I honestly feel so seen <laughs> that you knew to reach out to me about this. I don't remember if we'd ever had a conversation before about the fact that I have a, a deep love for this show. And you inviting me has like asked me to, <laughs> hi Rachel, has, has like made me remember watching this show. It, I know, so it's really come back in a visceral way for me as well. Yeah. Um, so what what made you excited to watch Sisters? And what was your experience watching it? Did you watch it on NBC? Did you watch the Lifetime reruns? No, 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 no. Um, I, I was old enough to be like a cognizant adult, like not right. adult, a cognizant being <laughs> watching a show that my mom was watching. But right. like, I was a lot like when I would like stay up a little to watch it with her and like, you know, like it was it wasn't for me, but I was watching it. Um, and I the coolest part about this show and I stand by this today is that all of the sisters names were nicknamed into boys names. Yeah, exactly. We love that. And we haven't even said them yet. I mean, we're talking about Alex. We're talking about Teddy. Georgie and Frankie. Oh, 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 I didn't realize I was coming in. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Turn off your other show. You did. I just did. <laughs> Hi. Happy to see you. Thank Hello. you. Hi, George. Looking good. Uh, so we I'd love to have you here, Legina. How about you? What was your experience watching it? Was it NBC, Lifetime? 
A fever dream? Um, both. Hello, Porque no los dos. Uh, I, because I definitely watched it. The, the So when it was airing, I watched it and didn't really understand it. And then the reruns would come on. And I feel like I was like, oh, I now I was always right, but I didn't really understand things like sex or whatever. And then I was like, yeah, Frankie ain't shit. You don't sleep I mean, with your You made it incredibly aggressive. <laughs> like, you know, Frankie ain't shit, Hill. Um, <laughs> So wow. yeah, I watched too much of this show. I watched in every version that there was on yeah. basic Google. I feel like I similarly, I I watched it when it originally aired with my mom, but I was very young, but my dad traveled a lot. So I, she would let me stay up and like watch TV with her. But my mom told me that like, I would be like playing with my Barbie dolls and like acting out the scenes that I was seeing with my dolls. Like I would name my Barbies after, yeah, right? Same thing. Yeah, I, I did same that. thing. <laughs> I was definitely at the age where I was still playing house. Yes. So I would watch the show and then the next day, whenever I played house, mm -hmm. I was I was Sam, I was <laughs> Samantha, because that that wasn't one of the boy names that was used. Yeah. Same, same. <gasps> There's always Sam too. <laughs> but that's also American Girl, Samantha. I was going to say the same thing, but I was like, no, they're not talking about that. Don't derail. But yeah, it was, it was, like, it was, was it a, yeah, it, it was, was in all in there. It was in the ether. All right. <laughs> I think we've we've talked enough. We were gonna we're gonna watch uh, a, some a iconic clip um, between Teddy and Falconer. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so there are very few clips available on the internet, and we have chosen a few of the few we could find. We chose just a couple that we want to just bear witness to tonight and and share with you all. So we're gonna get Can that I clip. Just oh, sorry. Yeah. Talk over the whole thing. I just was in. Oh, is that Clooney? I, what? What's George Clooney's in this? Yeah, yeah he's really Falconer. Yeah, please notice this whole scene is subtitled in, I believe, Hebrew. Yeah. Let's hope. We are gathered here to unite. To unite. For anyone who hasn't seen this clip in 20 years or has never seen the show, uh, Teddy, played by Celia Ward, uh, is in a relationship with Falconer, played by Clooney Movies, or Clooney, and their plane is going down, and so this rabbi marries them on a flight because they think they're about to die. Amazing. There was a lot of plain fear stuff happening in this era. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. 80s and early 90s did a lot of plane crashing stuff. Yes. And <laughs> that was a part of the zeitgeist of the 80s and 90s. Yes. Oh, uh, this, no, this show had it all. It was cr cross-dressing, which, you know, I'm just saying that's what they were calling it, folks. Of course. So yes. understand yes. Now. Um, but, you know, there was HIV, which of course in this time was like, oh, you know, very dramatic and a death sentence. It's very yeah. cringy to think about now, but I remember being very invested in it being like, oh my God, what is, what's going to happen? And um, now you look back and you're like, I mean, it was a great show. It was very, very dramatic nighttime soap, but nothing at good ever happened. It was like white people, good times, <laughs> you know, without the humor. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's how they pitched and sold this show. They walked into NBC, they said, white people, good times. Without <laughs> good times? Now let's give it white people. <laughs> but not fun. They're all well, they're all fine financially. But those <laughs> two orient people to that yeah. scene, what was happening. George Clooney plays Celia <laughs> Ward's second husband, who she met after, and again, another uh important issue. Her daughter was raped and Falconer was the detective who found yeah. the rapist. Thank and, God he saved her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this another victim of the rapist killed the rapist. Yeah, which is great. Which is a yeah. great little for a rapist to die. Yeah, I can, you know, but I also love a just like a you know you the contractor. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. sisters. Well, it's interesting because I'm pretty sure George Clooney has played a contractor. George Clooney. We need to take a moment. There are some the casting in this show go off is remarkable <laughs> Sorry, please, please. george clooney george clooney mm -hmm. for the gen z's that are watching mm -hmm. you need to understand george clooney was not just a handsome movie star george clooney i believe he started on soap which is one of the most 
original soap daytime like soap opera comedy. Oh, no. Yeah, that was with Billy Crystal, which you need to research. And it, and then, and I think he was a contractor in that Legina. So I don't know why you're being signed. No, I don't know why. I thought in my head though. I remember you're, you're right, probably. But I was thinking that it was that um not Sybil, but what was the other one? Like Murphy Brown. I was thinking it's was he in Murphy Brown, but he wasn't. No, he wasn't. that was no. a different contractor. That was a painter. That was a painter. Yeah, that was a painter, and she yes. has a baby with him. Yes. yes. Anyway, yes. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Also, yes. it was like, the same era. Oh, the, oh, that's, that's, so that's 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 honestly, we would, would never have. Listen, I just want to say we would never have Casa Amigos tequila if it wasn't for sisters because it was no, no. George Clooney's performance as Falconer that led directly to his booking ER. ER. And ER had the episode where he saves the kid in the drain, which is why he's a movie star. So everything we owe sisters. We owe That's actually sisters. facts. That's actual, there's direct science connection. Let's watch like another video. Uh, let's watch where the important surrogacy plot. One of the many. <laughs> this is what I remember the most of the show. So this, this is the this is that old is hot, hot hot um, So this is uh, Frankie, mm -hmm. the surrogate, with her husband Mitch. Now you may remember her husband Mitch as also Teddy's husband Mitch. And <laughs> as Frankie, <clears throat> Mitch, do you believe in oh. angels? <sighs> angels. Yes. Actually, I'm Susie more than a White Sox fan. Susie Park. They come in many guys. I'm getting that all over Teachers, again. Friends. <laughs> sisters. Sisters. Uh-oh. But the important thing is, whoever they, they are, the show every scene. they can answer your prayers. <laughs> Damn it. No. I'll, okay. Stay right there. Susie, Susie, Alex is volunteering to be the surrogate for Mitch. Well, wait, we are having well, a wait. very I'm here, Sila. Now, just here, sit down right uh -oh. here. Teddy's coming in hot. Don't interrupt. Yeah, right. Teddy, not interrupt, please. Yeah, right. So he was Ben. Susie's in forever. I want to be your angel. <laughs> your by carrying your baby. Mm -hmm. Alex. I've already been to the doctor. He says everything's absolutely fine. So, my womb is yours. Oh, oh, that's so incredible of me. Okay, I'm so incredible of her. Yeah, it certainly if I is. Don't know if this is yes. my womb is yours, why I'm going lose my mind. Like I'm going to carry. You? This. Well, what's so improbable about that? The judge. Just, well, yeah, just <laughs> remind people, sure. Ted showed up drunk at and Frank's sure everyone else wedding and shot too. people. <laughs> I know I'm probably the last person on this earth you think would ever volunteer. Mm -hmm. Maybe the last person you'd even consider. But after all the grief I've given you, I think it's time I give you some. The grief I've I'm given, given you. you. I know. I already heard you, so I'm carrying it. Well, is about to go off on a Frankie rant. I'm going to carry it. I'm giving Frankie her bag. You oh my God, we haven't even you talked about that. Yes. Flashbacks. So, who do you want to be? You pick. Who's that woman? I think it's not kids. I live. Well, well, their age now, and she's in yeah. something. I first of all, this is the one thing I remember from this show. I was I was thinking about when you asked me. I was like, I remember being a kid, and there was the sisters that were sleep had married the same guy or something. And I remember being a kid, being like, they one of the sisters was offering to have a baby. And I was like, did that mean that that sister was also going to marry him in my kid brain? And I was like, so all the sisters are, and that was what I I cannot believe that's online. I need to watch that every day to laugh. I think yes, I, and and just to spoiler, Georgie, the sister not in that scene, ends up carrying the baby. She gets in a horrific car accident. A lot of things happen. I forgot about all. Can we this. talk about? Uh, okay, a few things actually. I'm sorry. I, one, I know that Lauren Ashley Smith might be here on this show, and I, I think of her as a professional sister because of her sister tribe. I mean, they're they're celebrities in my. I don't know. They're to me. They're, Miss sisters, like the definition of sister, and so I'm really wondering, like, what she, as a professional sister, thinks about the surrogacy sister situation, and like whether she would do that for her sisters, um, or whether her, her have her sisters do that. Well, no, see, it's um, cute. When you haven't had sex with the man before. When you, it, it's it would be cute in a circumstance. It anyone besides being like, hey, so I know you were married to my sisters husband or you're now married to our sister's ex-husband and i'm gonna carry your baby like 
she was trying to start shit. It was it's messy as hell. It reduces the drama. They've already had sex. What's the big deal? Oh, right. Exactly. And you think like, it's gonna happen by they have sex again? That was my kid brain thinking. It was like, so then she's gonna have sex with him, and then also Seal Ward's gonna and they all the sisters except for the other one are gonna have sex with him. Right. Uh, Right. I think Robin, we need to we need to see what we have on our Grace our Grace clock. Going yeah. by going by what I learned from this show, that's how that worked. Anyway, yes, but I understand. Great, I love that we're getting kicked off. We do. We are we are going to get kicked off soon. Uh, Grey's Anatomy does start in uh, wow thirty three minutes. So, okay. uh, ladies, well, we can't thank you enough for a wonderful well representative more. of the sister fandom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow, Legina, Tessa, thank you for sharing a little yes, time. You look amazing, you great lady. Thanks for having me. Always love Kate, you. Your, your you thank you. Thank you for being our sisters. Wow, Bye. wow, wow, wow. Uh, two of my favorite people, and absolutely, they were sister stands. Um, well, I'm excited to get our our next folks up in here. Uh, we've got uh, two truly iconic uh, comedians that are going to be coming up next. We've got Christina Grace Tucker and Timothy Dunn oh in the house. Wow. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh my gosh. Wow. Well, I do need to apologize for being very unprofessional in the chat, and I do apologize for that to Caitlin specifically. That's I just okay. had to get that out. You know, it's it's in BTS, anything goes. It's girls gone wild. Listen, it's it's, listen. For the next 30 something minutes, we're living in the 90s and sexual harassment doesn't exist yet. So you are doesn't okay. Doesn't exist. No. You know, I'm so glad to have you guys. Tim Dunn, my very longtime close friend, was in my wedding. Christina, the second Zoom I've ever met you in, but we are all good friends. This a family can look like anything, is. okay? A, fam yeah. a family can look like anything. And, we're and it often does. It often <laughs> does look like anything. Yes. Well, you know, Christina Grace, you were recently on the podcast, and we were talking about fabulous women over 40, and it just... It felt like perfect kismet that we bring you on tonight. And Tim, clearly there's a swoozy Kurtz living inside of you. Uh, for for sure. So we needed to do a segment about, you know, the hotness of the sisters and mm -hmm. the rest of the cast. Mm -hmm. So we want to talk about, you know, who's hottest? Who do you want to marry? Um, who do you just want to hang out with and have mm -hmm. a team? These are all acceptable ways to be. So first up, we have Swoozy Kurtz as Alex Reed. <sighs> Top thoughts. Okay, so Alex is a nightmare, but in a way that I'm like, yes, that is the kind of shit I want to be hanging out with all the time. Yeah, I feel like this is me. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So I'm really loving this for you. She had her, um, she had cancer, yeah. and then she got somehow a wig that looked exactly like her hair, because probably because it was just the same Swoozie wig that they used. <laughs> and I just remember that scene really blowing me away of like, wow, she can look the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a true icon. Wow. I mean, Family can look before, like anything. Wigs can look like show, anything. Even. Her name is Swoozie. So, like, she's already an icon. Swoozie. She's if a two time Emmy Award winner. And call me Cat, you know? Well, okay, she on that note, the drama. Mm. Okay, well, we're not talking about Call Me Cat tonight, so we're gonna move on <laughs> to our next pick because I don't have the time to unpack <laughs> that. Seal Award as Teddy, uh, and someone who was just mentioned has commented on our Instagram about this show, so she could yeah. be watching. <laughs> we don't know, Sila. If I you're here, it. let us know in the chat. So, thoughts about Teddy? Uh, the way I want to marry this woman yeah. is. Irresponsible of me. Like embodies some sort of like uh, female, like, se like independent sensuality. That like, she was always very sort of like like a horny icon, like a cat woman sort of. Ooh. Yeah. And I think we all know that we're sisters to premiere right here in 2021. She would have been the gay one. Like we know that. We saw the jackets. You're not hiding anything from me. I know what's going on there. I know what those jackets are doing. Did you see the jacket in the last the series? Oh, did I? Oh, that Cersei clip. Really? I, I don't know if there's anyone I wanted to be more growing up than Teddy. 
Yeah. Theodora, <laughs> you mean? <laughs> Theodora Reed, the brand. I tire. She was. Oh, she was oh. Wait, her daughter on the show was named Cat. Do you think Swoozy Kurtz ever gets confused on the set of Call Me Cat? <laughs> I 100 percent Yes, do. yes, constantly. She can't do it together. I will be charging you fifty dollars for every mention of Call Me Cat for the show via Venmo. Wait, Legina said not. More than anyone's ever mentioned Call Me Cat ever on the internet, actually. <laughs> All right. We're breaking records tonight, fam. We're going to check in with our next sister. That's Georgie. <sighs> Georgie. You need a Georgie. You need, yes. And the sisters need a Georgie. Do yeah. I personally need Georgie in my life? No, maybe no. Like, maybe no. But I respect the work she's doing. She like I... unloaded the dishwasher. You know, she did the things that need to get done that, that like, <laughs> you don't want to count on Swoosie to be doing that because you'll be waiting for right. the day. But you know, like she'll un she'll unload the dishwasher. Like she'll pick up your socks in the morning you left them in the living room. You know, I'm saying the problem. The problem is that I'm the the Georgie, so I yeah. don't need that. Well, I was gonna say I, am I, too, I, I think like, I mm -hmm. wanted Teddy, but I identify as a Georgie, and I mm -hmm. feel like tonight I was trying to sort of cosplay as Georgie, and you nailed it. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have Georgie you noticed the difference, Lauren? <laughs> <laughs> have you been are, are you cleaning this whole time i have my feet are actually mopping nice <laughs> there's something about georgie being the third oldest but being the most responsible that's a little like relax in the words of tim dunn like what are you proving it just calm down writers we get it i love her i love i'm i'm a georgie stan but I get it. I, I hear what right. you're saying. and I next up we like have Gina hill's least favorite character frankie <laughs> Barely remember Frankie, if I'm being honest. Barely Honestly, Frankie remember. made no impression on me. I, like, I was a little bit of a rude pick. She also has curly kind of Meg Ryan -y hair sometimes, but I loved this top. So this I top is incredible. It's like, is it Patty Lapone? Is it Bernadette Peters? Is it someone in the middle? Like, who is this person? Who are you trying I, to be? And why, is, to be wig, both of why is your wig budget so off? <laughs> Who's going to take it? All um, right. So of the four sisters, who's the hottest? I mean, it's Teddy. Just Teddy. science says Teddy. Yeah. Theodora. That's what's, yeah, that's what, that's what right. scholarship says. Research. We, we've heard it here. Scholarship says Theodore is the hottest. But now we need to ask. Which sister's husband, and by which sister I mean which of Teddy's husbands is the hottest? So this is Mitch, who was married to Teddy and Frankie. <laughs> Thank you, Getty Images, for loaning us this black and white photo. Was Seema Ward the one that was in Crocodile Dundee? No. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I had I'm going to make her in a reboot. <laughs> you know what 80s movie she was in, Tim, is Hello Again. Do you remember that one with Shelley Long? Yes. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. I, I also I, get her confused. I think that's though. what you were thinking. She mar Shelley Long dies, and she marries Shelley Long's rich husband. But then Shelley Long comes back to life. Hello again. <laughs> that sounds like something Shelley Long would do in real life. Call me for the Shelley Long one of these, by the way. I'm free that night as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as Regina points out, uh, Mitch was broke. But do we think he's hot or not? Worth getting two sisters? He's got great hair. Mm -hmm. I don't photo, know if it's good enough. The okay. photo isn't it, but his essence is Mitch. Mm. I got it. He had a vibe. Part about okay. it is this. We all know Mitch can fuck. All right. Mm. Oh, yeah. No doubt. All right. Well, well first we have the iconic Falconer. They knew what they were doing. They named him Falconer. Like, are you kidding me? That's not a name. That was one of those weird Berenstein Bear moments I had where I was like, there wasn't a guy named Falconer on a TV show when I was little, was there? Like that's no, a truly really insane name. And I looked and it was George Clooney. It was one of those like, wait a, wait a minute, everything's crashing down. <laughs> And I'd like to point out that in the uh, the clip we saw earlier with Falconer and Teddy that was subtitled in Hebrew, someone <laughs> has gone through Falconer and Teddy scenes and uploaded them to YouTube and subtitled them all in Hebrew. So someone is doing the work for that community Thank you. Yeah. We, thank you. This is how the internet turns, by it stands on YouTube. Uh, All right, we have one and, more husband that we- Oh, we Teddy's have. husband. Okay, no, never mind. We're not gonna- <laughs> We can't, we actually can't. We actually we can't. can't talk about it. We can't talk about it. We can't talk about it. We wanna talk about it, so we can't. So uh, 
obviously the choice here is Falconer. Obviously, Falconer's Falcon. yeah. the hottest of Teddy's husbands. Yeah. All right, we have although, two. although. <laughs> I love this for you. Oh, thank you, Wisdom Agreements. His name is James Falconer. Hi. Hi. And, and, how, and how could you not go by Falconer if your first name is James? They call him James, did they, on the show? No, they called him Falconer. Hey, as, as someone who's often referred to by their last name, I get it, and I see you, Falconer. Yeah. Um, all right, well, we've got, we've got just two more characters that we got to check in with mm -hmm. um, to find out which of these two are hotter. Mm. Uh, we have Alex's daughter Reed as played by Ashley Judd. Can you believe or this cast? This cast her on screen husband Paul Rudd. God, God Rudd. Which one was hotter? And this Rudd. Rudd. Look at this bit. Okay, but look what you've chosen. Look what you've done to the Rudd here. <laughs> I was not in charge of hair and makeup for 1996 <laughs> season of Sisters. I thank God because look at Paul Rudd looks like Tarzan. And I'm I'm not, not bad at it. Yeah. I would pick Paul Rudd, I think. <laughs> I think so. I think I have to. It's like an Eddie Vedder moment back then. It, like that's exactly what it was. It's an absolute Vedder. always Vedder felt Vedder. like he was 40 and she was 20. Like the age, like the faces age-wise didn't like match up to me. Well, it's because Paul Rudd's looking in reverse. He looked older when he was younger, and now he looks so much younger. And, and he's yeah. forever had the energy of like a 45 year old man. He's always just like, ugh, which I respect and love. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. That's my How energy. Annoying. How annoying that he's been so good for so long. <laughs> no one is shit. But no can one. you believe the amount of like actual icons that were on this one show? I can't. Like no one watched it but us. <laughs> <laughs> Us and the six people here are the people who watch the show. Amazing. Well, y'all, um, Grey's Anatomy is only 22 minutes away, so we're going to have to move on. Thank you to my best friends, Tim and Christina. You're <laughs> Thank welcome. You. We Thank love you. Your hot. Thank you, my sisters. I wish, I wish nothing but hot seal award energy for you both. Thank you. All right. Well, Caitlin, well, I think it's time to check in with our gen correspondents. We must we check have, in. We have they, they have been Welcome back, Gen Z. Wow. Hi. Hi, Rita and Cam. So, a lot of information thrown at you. Yes. Yes, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> how are we feeling? What are What are we thinking about the show? How thoughts, feelings, actions? Those characters, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know you should have said by looks but there's there was a lot of middle parts going on mm -hmm. um not middle parts side parts Sorry, there was a lot of side parts going on not enough not enough middle parts okay. there was we finally yeah. found out we found out a little tidbit of the surrogate drama mm -hmm. yeah um we we were getting a good chuckle at the um my womb is my, your womb your line womb. Yes. <laughs> i even wrote kim a little note um my womb is oh. your Oh, that's so sweet. Wow. Yes. So are, how are you feeling? If we were to set, if we were to get Netflix to drop this series tomorrow, would, right now, based on what you've seen, would you be would you be down to binge watch this series so far, based on what you've seen? I feel like I would have to, but I also would like to see a reboot with like nuanced mm -hmm. societal concepts. Wow, oh. what a seg. What a segment way, because we actually, um, wow, we only have 19 minutes until Grey's Anatomy. So uh, we have to thank you so much. We're going to come back and check in with you again, Gen Z. But you have perfectly set us up for our next segment because we have television writer and professional sister, Lauren Ashley Smith, in the house tonight to help us conceptualize what a reboot would look like. Hello. Um, I we don't know if you saw that Tessa <laughs> called you a professional sister, and <laughs> she's waiting with bated breath on your opinion of this show. <laughs> I am a professional sister, and my specialty is being a big sister. Whoa! Um, that is my that is that ups my pay to. I have a special fee I can can call up. Uh, in but that what's amazing is you're famously a the top of three and that has like we got a we got a beginning middle and end there mm -hmm. now with sisters the show they have four and i feel yeah. like an issue w over and over again was alex and teddy kind of vying to be number one like yes. how do you handle a situation like that 
Uh, for <laughs> me, I find that the the way to, to assert your authority is to not fight for it. If you mm -hmm. feel you have to fight for it, it's not rightfully yours. Wow. So to even engage in the back and forth is acquiescing to the other one's authority. Wow. Wow. That I wish someone could have told Alex that day one, but they did not. So All right. who brought you on? You are the fabulous writer of a Black Lady sketch show, Emmy nominated, and Gen Z, you just heard them. They're clamoring to get a reboot. They're they are the, the dorm is, <laughs> there's protests going on. Yeah. They want the sisters reboot. So how do you see this? How 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 would it work? Okay, so I was thinking about this in preparation for this conversation, and I found that the common thread for reboots that really capture our attention is that there needs to be a fundamental, um, there needs to be a hook beyond just the original premise of a beloved show. So for example, the Charmed reboot is fantastic. It works great because it shows you the thing you love through the lens of a different cultural background because now the sisters are Latinx. So I believe that I would like to see the sisters as for black women, mm -hmm. for Asian women, for Latinx women, that, that screams to me. And also to elevate it even more, I believe that they should find four actual sisters who are actresses to portray the characters. That is what I think would be the headline. So and what I'm hearing is the Smith sisters mm -hmm. need their fourth. We need a fourth, yes. Wow. I'm just saying, I, I don't know if that, I can make some calls, but um, that's what I'm feeling. That is amazing. Or, you know, the Braxtons could do it. Yes. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh. Yes. Wow. Are there any other sister, like four sisters? Tessa is volunteering to be the fourth Smith sister. You're hired. You're hired, Tessa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I'm loving this. Now, where do you think creatively, like who, what studio, what network could actually pull this off? Like, who do you think is out there right now that can like strike that right chord? A lot of people this are trying to show, show Yeah, I feel like this show, aside from the fact that the women are all solidly like middle-aged from my mm -hmm. remembering of it as a kid. Again, I only watched it as a kid, so they might've been 20, I don't know. But in yeah. my mind, they were old. And yeah. <laughs> so I would love for this to be on something like Freeform, but it feels out of the age bracket. Yeah. Um, so I think Lifetime would be a good start or VH1. Wow. wow. I think those are both great because I think they both want to have like a little bit of sense of humor, but not too much. I don't want it to be too funny. Exactly. Don't try to don't make it a comedy, please. Victoria yeah. just Peacock original question mark. I don't know. Huh. Maybe because you know it is an NBC property, so there could be something in there. Um, but oh wow, they were in their 30s. So Okay, thank goodness. Because they were actually extremely young and had they were actually babies they actually were in diapers and uh we as a child i was like these women are 55 years old like that was what i remembered it as i i definitely remember them i thought they were all in their 40s the youngest but now as a woman who is in her 30s i recognize that they were children exactly Same. right we were watching a coming of age show yeah <laughs> That's why it's called Sisters, because they're all playing on the playground. Um, I'm pitching Party B and her sister, Hennessy. Okay. Again, I'm listening. This is the, do you see how yeah. being actual sisters could really, really fine tune the dynamic? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think it should stay somewhere in the Chicagoland area. It yes. doesn't have to be Winnetka, Illinois, but I think it should stay true to that area of the country. Who else could be, I mean, who do we want to see? We're certainly not going to tell the sisters casting department what to do because they are geniuses. Mm -hmm. Who are some up outside of just the core four who are the husbands we want to see, the wives we want to see, the adult children we want to see? Yeah, you know, looking, I watched a little bit of when you guys were going through the husbands, like I forgot that Paul Rudd was on the show. I forgot that George Clooney was on the show. I'm like trying to think of who are our, like who's our Clooney, like trying to be forward thinking enough to be like, okay, who is the Clooney that's on like, um, you know, a teen show right now? Who is that person now? Because we need him there. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, okay. So I think there's a young actor who has been like circling the outliers of Hollywood for a while now. He, the first time he came onto my radar was on the MTV show Finding Carter. um, And he was on The Fosters. And now he's on Nancy Drew. And his name is um, Alex Saxton. Okay. He plays like the, he's got like the long blonde hair. He's always kind of playing like a bad boy rebel. And I feel like he would be a perfect like young husband. Like yes. I feel like he's someone who has real potential and a mm-hmm. thing a show like this could be a tipping point. Yeah. I'm not familiar with his face, but his resume sounds right. Like he it sounds like it fits the bill. What you were saying actually reminded me also Jordan Fisher would be a good um contender i feel like he could be like the cool like quiet musician husband Mm -hmm. that uh has maybe a dark turn yeah yeah and i mean now that we're we're under 15 minutes away anyone from the grays verse that we would want to see wow okay i first want to express my extreme jealousy it is only 5 47 p.m here on the west coast and um that means that this we got to tack a couple hours onto that clock, but um, <laughs> from the Gray's verse, you know I'm gonna go glasses. Yes, Schmetti. Okay, go glasses. A husband, a stepson, a neighbor. <laughs> I don't care. I I'm gonna throw this out there. Not that this man needs any more paychecks because he works more than anyone else. But James Pickens, let's get him on Sisters. Yes. You know, if James is reporting to set, we're in good hands. Yes, and it'll, it'll be a hit for decades. As yes. soon as he's on set, he makes things. Mm-hmm. And he's done reboot. He did X Files. Yeah. He's, he's done Connors. Yeah. He's, he is the secret sauce. Like the mm-hmm. second he steps on the set, that buys you your 100th episode. Like it's <laughs> in his contract. And I would love it if he was in like a May-December rela- relationship. Like not as creepy as Mary Crosby and her husband on Salt Lake City, but like sort of that vibe of like, you know, we're constantly having to justify it sort of thing. I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't know why I want that, but I do. I hey, you know what? I'm listening, and I hope that Freeform and/or Peacock is as well. I think uh, he's asking about Owen, which I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to. Oh, put that. but that makes sense for for it Lee. makes sense. Yeah. But wow, yeah, yeah, Riz, of course, of course, I love this. We don't need a lot of people. They each need three or four significant others. Exactly, like the well is deep, and that's the beautiful thing about this show. That is what's beautiful about it. I have I, I have two fi- last questions for you. I don't know if Caitlin has any others, but you know, one of the things that Gen Z sort of pointed out to us was that it was really baby obsessed in the '90s. Mm-hmm. What do you think we're going to be obsessed with story wise now in 2021, 2022, revisiting sisters? Like, what's going to be our storyline? What's going to be the well we tap a lot? Do you think social media? And it will never be named by platform. It will never be Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, or YouTube. It will just be something went bad on social media. Oh, no. Wow. Oh, no. And then my last question, just because I, I couldn't have you, we can't have you here and me not ask, but I want to know, what's the log line for the reboot? Like, how? What's that? what's that log line that gets you the green light? Four sisters grapple with their lives ahead together or not. Wow. That feels dangerous. Wow. Wow. (sighs) Wow. I'm excited. I feel like this is going to happen. I feel like Lifetime is watching this live stream and you're going to have an offer in your inbox, Lauren, before you go to bed. I hope so. Like I said, it's only 5.50 here, yeah. so it's not in the business time. yet. You have time to grow, so yeah. you can. <laughs> well, Lauren, thank you so much for bringing your professional yes. and everything. It's so nice to see your face and to, and to bask in the glory that is your wisdom. So thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Of course. Anytime we do a sister's live. <laughs> we have to. Um, all right. I think we got to bring Gen Z back. We got to find yeah. out their What's thoughts. The, the reboot? Yeah, they they inspired this whole segment. So let's hear from our Gen Z. Gen Z! Hey! Hey. 
All right. So we've just spent a very uh, wacky night traveling back in time to the 1990s. Uh, having listened to all that you've heard tonight, now what do you think the show is about? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like the rated R Fuller House. Do you know how they made a reboot of Fuller House? Like with the Kimmy Gibbler and Michelle mm -hmm. Dupac mm -hmm. and everyone was petty. I think it's like that, but rated like R. It's kind of like a combo to me between like a soap opera and like a friend situation. There's There was a lot of dramatic looks. There's a lot of friend drama. There's a lot of again babies and that and marriage drama she was married multiple times it uh, gives me soap friends vibes okay I I that. I think that's pretty accurate i love that now based on what you're hearing lauren sort of pitching for this reboot do you have any thoughts about up and coming actors that you think need to be in the in the sisters reboot zendaya. i'm looking at it right now i would love to see zendaya in it great when you were talking about who the guy could be, maybe Timothy Chalamet, if we want to go more higher profile. I like it. I like it. I like it. The movie star backtracking a TV move. It has worked before. It could work again. Mm -hmm. What if they turned it into a comedy? A comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm listening. I'm I think listening. More people would be into it. I think more people would vibe. Or at least a mix. Yeah. A dramedy. Yeah. All right. I mean, these are all great ideas. I thank you so much. I think, you know, seeing it through your eyes, we've learned so much more. Yeah. Now, uh, Sarita and Kim, before we say goodbye tonight, as, as the spokespersons for Gen Z, what is it that you think TV needs now more than ever? What are you, what do you think we need to do in TV right now, Gen Z? We need topics that are relevant to mm -hmm. our times and things that things that people can relate to like in okay. terms of drama it shouldn't be like oh my god stephanie's boyfriend cheated on her i think it needs to be more real topics dealing in anxiety or depression or things that teens now do deal with yeah like um kim and i talk about cheryl blossom all the time i in Vented red. Now, stuff like that in a Glee style satirical is all fine and good, but Riverdale's trying to say that they actually talk like that. So <laughs> I, need, I, I, yeah. I need realistic teen dialogue. Oh, and I don't want people playing teens that look like they're like 30. Like in, River, like in Riverdale either. I want people that like look like us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I think TV needs a Sarita and Kim show. Wow. Agreed. 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 You I'm right. my number one fan, Tessa Claire Hirsch, is watching. She's going to want to connect with you. Uh, thank you guys so much. You've added so much to the show. Thank, thank you me. so much for being here. Mm -hmm. Extra credit for you both. Yes. yes. And Z. Thank you. Wow. wow. We did it. We did it. We managed to do a live stream in only an hour. We've never accomplished I mean, How much time do we have left? We have, let's see, five minutes. five minutes. We have five minutes left. In these last five minutes, uh, feel free to shout out in the chat if there was anything we didn't cover tonight that you feel yes, like. And uh, the Netflix petition, right? We want to show that one more oh, time. Oh, yes. We want to show that one more time. If you tuned in tonight or if you're watching this later on YouTube and you're like, yeah, Sisters needs to be on Netflix, don't worry. There is already a petition. And we will be adding this petition to our link tree. So follow us on uh, Instagram at we stand social and we're going to be adding that link to our link tree so you can find it there folks uh, yeah we're on Twitter we're on Facebook we got an email account we're on too much social media baby yeah and if you want us to do another one of these deep dive live streams let us know what about you know what we like and you know what we're into um, we cannot thank our guest enough Serena and Kim Gen Z bringing the wisdom in Lauren Ashley Smith Christina Grace Tucker and Timothy Dunn, Legina Hill, and Tessa Claire Hirsch. Wow, icons, each and every one of you. And I don't know about you, but I am both filled with 
love and joy after spending a night thinking of all these amazing characters in the world of sisters, but also so incredibly disappointed that I can't just go watch an episode now. It's but I, hard. But I do feel um, a little bit better knowing that Grays will be on. And I do have to ask, I know this is a live stream about sisters, but Caitlin, what are you hoping is going to happen tonight on Grays? And thank you so much for the shout out from the, from the woman who cool, bought yeah. us. You are awesome. Um, I hope that I hope Meredith's okay. Okay. And yeah. I think that we're gonna get a a beach scene. Mm -hmm. And I kind of hope it's Ellis. <sighs> yeah, yeah. I think we probably need to see Ellis. I'm worried we might see her dad. I don't know that we need it, but I'm worried we might see it. I could be okay with it, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm not really for it. Yeah, I'm not particularly. Oh my God, what if we saw Lexi? Okay, on that note, we need to go cry. Uh, to our wonderful producer, Rodney, you are amazing. You are what Rodney Brazil. Yes, follow all that Braz on social media for all of his iconicness. We stan Rodney Brazil. And of course, if you want more hot pop hot takes on pop culture follow us also on apple or whatever other streaming services you use to listen to podcasts because every tuesday we drop a brand new episode on a totally different topic each That's week hot one's coming up yeah love you guys we gotta go watch grace we gotta go watch grace later stan stands